Living history is an incredible thing. You know, to tell history, to show history is awesome. And uh, I really wanted to educate and introduce people to new foods that are native to this land and also that were introduced by the English and the French and the Spanish as they um, came into what we now call the America. What I have here on this table is an array of everything that I look for when I go out foraging, um, whether it be berries um, in the autumn, which I dry um, and store, um, or if it's mosses and rock tripes, like this is rock tripe, it's absolutely delicious. Historically, this was used um, as early as the 1600s and was recorded in 1777 in the battle at Valley Forge by Washington for his troops, who were shown this by the Stockbridge Mohicans um, to survive on uh, during the winter months when their supplies ran out. It's incredibly important, and a lot of uh, soldiers there managed to live through the winter. They taste like oatmeal, and they're absolutely delicious. When I moved up to the Adirondack State Park, I had no real knowledge of what had passed here before me, uh, and it was through um, falling in love with my partner, Brian. And he's a mixed blood Mohawk. He also reenacts in living history. It was that I realized just the, the huge amount of things that have happened here. That's why I'm a historical forager, because so many of the things, the foods were forgotten or have been forgotten. And, and I love to reintroduce them, so to speak, into people's um, minds and imaginations and also diets as well. When I go out into the woods, what I like to do is I like to learn a different plant every time I go out. I like to teach people about the plants and, and how you can use them and how you can eat them. This wonderful basket here is full of what we call sunchokes. Um, a lot of people know them as Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, I, here at home, turn them into um, fries and I also love to mash them, um, but they are also edible raw too. So if you're in a survival situation, this is a really handy tuber to find and eat. I think the most important thing I have on this whole table here to me is this little birch basket here made of birch. And this is um, birch cambium. Now, the Adirondacks, the name the Adirondacks actually means bark eater. Tradition goes that um, the opposite tribe, whether it would be Apanapi or, or Mohican, uh, would eat the bark during winter because they were such bad hunters that that was the only thing that they could eat. So Adirondack actually means bark eater. Um, so you can eat the cambium from underneath the bark. Uh, it's like a beautiful pale yellow. Um, there are two different kinds of birch trees that we have around here. We have the white birch and we have the yellow birch. I personally prefer the yellow birch because it has a really nice spearminty flavor um, and you can eat it raw, so just like this. So I find that when I walk out into the woods that you feel a connection with nature. So often when I have to go into the cities, uh, or you, you can't even see the sky because the buildings are so tall and I, I find that walking in the wood allows me to recenter myself and ground myself. Foraging and walking in the woods helps me get back to the simple, simpleness of life. Very common here in these mountains are mushrooms which is my absolute um, favorite thing in the world to talk about. So whether it's the jelly mushrooms, which are dehydrated like this, and then they hydrate up to 40 times their size within, uh, this is an hour and a half, it's been in the water and it's hydrated up. Um, they're really good, you can eat them raw. To oyster mushrooms, to chaga, which I um, use in my coffee. That's amazing. Wow. It's probably one of the most beautiful pieces we've ever harvested, actually. When it comes to mushrooms, if you're interested in mycology, which is one of my greatest passions, I would say um, do it carefully and slowly. And uh, most definitely do not eat anything unless you are 100% sure of what it is that you have in front of you. I have been foraging, um, originally it was mushrooms, teaching people on Instagram about what kind of mushrooms there were in the northeast um, of America. And uh, then it, goes, it carried on to plants. 
<laughs> and then it was just basically being outdoors and enjoying and, and this gradual kind of cycle um, appeared to attract the attention of uh, one of the casting directors for the Alone show. So I think when they asked me to try out for season 10 for the Alone show for History Channel, then I accepted. My strategy is to live as close as possible to someone who was coming into this area in the 1700s. My skills as a living historian of knowing how people survived gives me so much more access to what it is that surrounds us, whether it be on the ground, under the ground, in the water, in the trees. It looks pretty awesome. What did I learn whilst I was out there? You basically learn that you don't need technology as much as you think you do. And uh, you learn to slow down. You learn to stop multitasking. And you learn to just breathe. What my mindset is um, when I'm in the wilderness. Obviously, there's two kinds of wilderness. Um, one is the amazing Adirondack State Park, which I'm in quite often and I absolutely love. And, and when I'm here, um, I'm enjoying the beauty um, of this incredible six million acre park. But when I was in the Arctic, I think, it, again, it was food, but it's storing, making sure that you have supplies. And uh, my historical foraging really came into play then and uh, really did me well. What you're looking for is to create supplies for the future. So I spend a lot of my time uh, foraging carbs and starches of all different kinds. And you're going to have to watch the show to find out what they were. <laughs> what I see is the benefit from stepping away from civilization and coming out here into this gorgeous natural beauty. I would say it allows me the chance to reflect, to think, and uh, to sort my thoughts out. Um, more and more, I'm going to tell you, um, this is a form of actual therapy. Uh, there are guided walks and uh, therapists actually take their patients out into nature. Um, and some of them make them take their shoes off too, uh, to ground themselves uh, uh, because they find that it slows the heartbeat down, reduces stress and uh, helps and benefit the uh, human soul. So I'm just doing it as much as I can, whenever I can, um, as my own form of therapy and uh, lifestyle. It's, it's a wonderful one to have.